Hi, everyone. Welcome to Right Sleep Sleep Chats. This is a series of short videos featuring Right Sleep creator, Dr. Stasha Gomenak, answering some of our frequently asked questions, as well as others you may not have thought of to ask. We'll tackle one question at a time to help you improve your sleep and ultimately improve your health. Stasha, today's question is something you are very familiar with. What is restless leg syndrome? Hi, my name is Stasha Gomenak. I am a retired neurologist and now I'm a sleep coach and we're doing a series of short videos. Heather's right, I'm very familiar with restless leg syndrome and it is one of the personal events in my life that has fueled my interest in sleep. And I'm going to give you my opinion of what restless leg syndrome is. And uh, it's not always completely parallel what the, with the rest of the scientists and what they're writing. Restless leg syndrome is a feeling like you have to move your legs as you move into drowsiness. So number one, it is a specific part of the body and it can move into the arms, but in the legs, what I get is an, what's called a Babinski. A Babinski is a reflex that we find in infants that is supposed to go, go away at about six months of age. And if you tickle their foot with your thumb and you start at the heel and you move up the foot, their toes splay out and the, and the big toe comes up and their leg pulls towards them. These are what are called primitive reflexes that we use as neurologists to judge developmental milestones in babies. So usually that particular reflex goes away somewhere between six and eight months. And we're taught that the reason it goes away is the brain stem, the lowest part of the brain that becomes the spinal cord, that the brain stem is starting to myelinate. So if you've never thought about it, what's happening in little babies when they first start out, they can't control their head, they can't control their arms and legs. They don't have a connection between this part and the part that controls the movement of their limbs. You probably never thought of it that way, but they don't really have a connection between that. Um, they have reflex movements of their limbs. They have reflex sucking. So there are all these reflex movements that happen in babies. And then as they mature, the reason why they're able to walk at two years is the nervous system actually finishes its growth and development. So our babies are born not able to care for themselves. So guinea pig babies are born fully furred and able to eat regular food. They pop out ready to go. They nurse, but they also are just able to run around. Our babies are not. So there's a, a period of several years at the beginning of childhood where we're actually laying down new connections and this stuff, myelin, is the stuff that coats the nerves and it makes the connections out to moving my finger in a specific way. And babies develop a certain pincer grasp at a certain age and they cross the midline at a certain age. So what we're mapping out with those developmental milestones is the way the nervous system is maturing. So it turns out that what I get when I'm trying to fall asleep and I'm transitioning from fully awake to fully asleep is a Babinski. So if I let my leg do what it feels like it wants to do, my hip flexes, my knee flexes, my toe goes up and my toes go apart. Now that's kind of weird. Like why would it do that? And I can't really keep it from doing it. It, it is this constant feeling like my leg needs to pull up. In someone who is profoundly sleep deprived, who has severe restless leg syndrome, that same jerking, jumpy legs can come throughout the day. Once I did right sleep with them, most of the time the restless leg syndrome would just go completely away. But mine has never gone away. And there were a few other people in my practice who also had the same problem. And interestingly, 20 years later, it became uh, known that the 
antidepressants, the SNRIs, which is serotonin, norepinephrine, reuptake inhibitors, the medicines that increase the amount of serotonin and increase the amount of norepinephrine to make us happy and more satisfied tends to produce restless leg syndrome. And I started with restless legs around the same time I started that SNRI. So I'm still on my SNRI because I've tried to, to come off of it and I was unable to. There are two messages there. One is, why would you have a, an infant reflex kind of mm, breaking through into adulthood at drowsiness? Because that's what's happening. But there are numerous nuclei. Nuclei means clumps of neurons that are in the brainstem that are actually all supposed to be linked together and flip into the off position as another set flips into the on position. So if you've never thought about it, becoming unconscious actually isn't the only thing we're doing. We actually have multiple different things that are all hooked together that are flipping. And we're flipping from the awake, doing things, thinking with our brain to asleep. And now our brain is still working, but we're not aware of it. So we are being run by the lower part of our brain. We're being run by the brain stem and we are now unconscious. We're no longer actively aware of what our brain is doing. That's kind of a freaky idea, but that's what happens to us every night. In that flipping, there are multiple switches that are supposed to be inhibited. And one of them is an old reflex center that became inhibited as we moved into eight, nine, 10 months old, but is still present. And when the flip of the switch isn't quite right, that little reflex sort of bleeds through. There's another odd event that's probably happened to some of you who are watching this, which are little jerks of the arms and legs all four at the same time that are called hypnic jerks, which is a hypnic means moving from awake to asleep. So it's in drowsiness. It's the same thing, but it's a different reflex. So that reflex, which also you can see in little babies at four months old, if you drop them just slightly, you drop and then catch them, what you'll see is flexion of the arms and the legs. And they lose that reflex around the same time, six to eight months of age. And that's another event, people who have sleep disorders. And as they try to fall asleep, they get these jerks that wake them up. What that means is there are ways that we can cause a malfunction of these, what are supposed to be completely attached switches. So they all flip together to be a little uncoordinated. So one of the switches doesn't flip quite right and you actually experience something that you're really not supposed to experience. Now, there's another way to look at this, which is what I mentioned about the antidepressants. And that is if your serotonin and your norepinephrine levels are not quite right when you're flipping from awake to asleep, and I know that they're a little more elevated than they should be because these medicines that we take are really supposed to be active during the day. And having a serotonin and a norepinephrine that's elevated during the night is a big negative. It turns out when you take those medicines, you might be more satisfied during the day, but they delay the onset of REM sleep. So they affect sleep in a negative way because we're not supposed to be mucking around with those neurotransmitters during the sleep phase. So in the background, there's a second way to look at it, which is what are the ratios of my neurotransmitters? Dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, acetylcholine are the major players, epinephrine as well. When I'm transitioning through drowsiness, I have to take a dopamine copycat. And if I get the dopamine just right, I take it at 6.30, I get sleepy at 9.30, and I have no restless legs. I just fall asleep, 
blissfully no problem. If I don't get it exactly right, if I take it too late or I take it on an, a full stomach so that the medicine isn't released at the right time, then I will still experience some restless legs when I'm in drowsiness trying to fall asleep. So all of these reflexes that are present in a physical pattern by a wiring diagram in the brainstem are actually reflected in these chemicals that we use to move around so that we're doing something different with our brainstem in the night than we are during the day. And it actually allows that brainstem to be kind of a bifunctional piece of our body. It does really different jobs at night than it does during the day. And in order to get that, you have to have these neurotransmitters move around in exactly the right way. Now, stepping back from that for a moment, if you just look at restless leg syndrome, the way most of the sleep experts are talking about it, they usually let it wash over into another disorder called periodic limb movements of sleep. And that is something that we record on sleep studies by putting electrodes on the legs. And what we really record are periodic. Periodic means it comes at a certain rate. And they're actually walking movements because the legs alternate. And I can actually see my husband's feet if I'm awake in the middle of the night alternating. He's doing teeny tiny little walking movements in the middle of the night. That is, I believe, a different disorder. And it is still um, a reflex walking center that's in the brain stem that is not appropriately suppressed. So that still means that you're not getting appropriately paralyzed. And there's some of the nighttime brainstem responsibilities that aren't exactly right. So periodic limb movements of sleep is a finding on the sleep study. And it means that the paralysis or the actual function of the brainstem during sleep is not quite right. Some of the things that should be suppressed are leaking through, but I believe it's a different disorder than restless leg syndrome, which happens by definition when you're awake. It's a feeling that you experience with an associated leg movement that's reflexive, that your leg wants to do, even if you don't want it to do because you're sitting in a movie or you're in a plane and the, you're kicking the, the seat in front of you. And it's the finding that you can actually correct those ratios by paying attention to your vitamin D level and to your microbiome, and that the microbiome is a huge player in supplying some of the vitamins or the vital components that we need to make these neurotransmitters that changed everything for me. And that's why I developed the Right Sleep Program. Thank you. I always... I've said it before, I always learn so much when I listen to you. And I, I think it's just reassuring to people to know that there's a cause or a reason why they do some of these, these movements in their sleep. So I thank you for that explanation, Stasha. And I thank you everyone for joining us. Please subscribe to the channel, then like and share our videos. You can find more information as well as the Right Sleep Program at drgomanek.com. Remember, we see our doctor once a year because we heal our bodies every night. Until the next sleep chat, sleep well. Bye.